Okay, so this video is called the Industrial Revolution. It's a little bit longer than my other videos. So um, it's six boards. This is the longest one we've had so far, but I'll try to keep it short. So we need to back up a little bit and just retouch on imperialism, which is the takeover of other nations. Um, so imperialism grew kind of during the period we were studying, the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, and that was how many of the Euro European countries made their money was by taking over other countries and creating colonies. Those Europeans that were in control, Spain, Portugal, Britain, France, Italy, all those in, um, took advantage of the people in those colonies and the natural resources that they found while they were over there. So during all this time, um, despite them finding these natural resources in these colonies, everybody was still pretty much in a farming society. Even remember the biggest money-making colonies that we talked about were plantation-based, farming-based societies. In fact, some experts would say that 80% of the entire world 15, 16, early 1700s said they identified themselves as farmers. To give you an idea today, it's less than 1% of the world. So we've had a huge shift from the farming industry during imperialism. And that's kind of what gives rise to the start of the Industrial Revolution, right? So before the start of Industrial Revolution, like we said, most people were farmers. They lived near their food, near their farm they worked on, um, and near water supply, so they would create cities or they'd create communities, towns around rivers or the sea or something like that, right? The rise in natural resources through imperialism, along with inventions and people's desire for goods, um, and then just many other things led to the Industrial Revolution. And so I, you need to kind of know this one, that through the natural resources they got through their imperialistic mindset, along with a number of inventions, and then just the, the, the people's desire for more product, more goods at a faster rate, led to this Industrial Revolution. So that's defined as a time period of rapid technological advancements that led to societal, political, and economic changes. For some examples, cities, factories, machines, education, healthcare, cars, technology, anything, you name it, the telegraph, the phone, the computer, that all gave rise out of the Industrial Revolution. So it all started kind of in Britain. I mean, there were a lot of areas where it could have started, but it really got a surge in England um, during the mid-1700s. And people in Britain found um, alternative energy sources like coal that they could be used to power certain things. And they also had a lot of colonies, right? So the, there was a huge demand for supplies from kind of the mother country to ship out to their colonies. And... Britain had a lot of money through taking advantage of those colonies and those natural resources, and they had a lot of people. Read here, meaning people, they had workers, right? So all this led to the start of the Industrial Revolution in the mid-1700s in Britain, across Europe, and eventually throughout the world. All right, so let's give you one example of how this works, right? The Industrial Revolution, the textiles. So early in the 1700s, people made clothes by hand. They would sew them, and, and then the best invention we have was one of those big weaving machines, and they'd move the yarn and then put the yarn and push it, move it, and so forth, right? So textiles and clothes are kind of the same thing. Then a British inventor, James Hargrave, came by or came along and made the spinning jenny. And that just meant you could do the kind of loom weaving yarn spinning just a little bit faster. Still wasn't fast enough, so then Richard Arkwright invented a water-powered spinning machine called a water frame, and that really amped up the production of cotton and textiles and clothes and fabrics, and the water frame and other machines that um, improved the textile industry led um, to factories, which eventually, or initially, ran on water, so all those factories were built near water sources, right? So that's kind of how the Industrial Revolution works in textiles but it doesn't stop here, right? So they get a little bit faster. People are getting clothes at a faster rate. And then they're like, I think we can do this faster. So James Watt comes along and he invents the modern steam engine. Some people will say that he didn't invent the first steam engine he made improvements upon, but he did make, I guess, the modern steam engine, if you will. Um, and this was a machine that ran on steam and could be built anywhere. So as you notice, the previous factories, the previous machines had to be water powered. Now you had a machine that could create steam and thus power entire factories. And this led to an increase in cities and city life because these factories could be built anywhere, right? So then people began to move to cities to work in the factories, which was good because farming technology had improved so much that many of the typical farming jobs had started to disappear for people and they were out of jobs on the farms back in the towns outside the city. So they would move to the cities to work in the factories. 
steam power led to an increased demand for coal and iron. And you can take um, iron and, and convert it into steel. It was really expensive to do that. And they figured out a cheap way to create steel, which then led to the um, steel industry. And that's how you started building these big buildings and these big factories and laying railroads and building trains. And you can just see how it's all connected in this one big cycle. Communication and transportation also improved greatly during the Industrial Revolution. You have trained, steam-powered boats that are going up and down the river, transporting goods and people, and also the telegraph that could send a message um, instantly across um, kind of a, a wide span of time that would have t traditionally taken weeks or months, right? So let's look at some other effects of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, factory life was tough. It wasn't good. Long hours, hard work, back-breaking, tedious work, very dangerous machines where people could lose fingers, hands, um, and it also led to an increase in child labor because the children worked in the factories because their hands were small and they could fix machines or do different tasks with those machines. Goods became cheaper um, and more available, so you had more clothes to sell, you had um, just more goods in general to sell, and since you could make them faster and quicker, it didn't cost you as much, so you didn't have to charge as much for them. This also gave rise to horrible and impoverished living conditions in society, so while some people did make more money, um, Oh, I skipped one. I'll come back to it. Some people did make more money. Not everybody did. They would move to the factories. It's just the wages weren't very good. They never really got out of um, poor conditions. And everybody lived kind of close together and in these small compartments. And this really led to um, a rapid increase of disease and spreading disease. Other people grew very wealthy. They took advantage of the Industrial Revolution or they were in the right spot at the right time and were able to um, grow profit from that. The Industrial Revolution also gave life to this new economic system, which we'll talk more about in a later video called capitalism. And that's the idea that individuals own the business and the resources associated with that business and they put their money into it, hoping to make a profit and the government doesn't touch that. So that's a new economic system that we'll talk about in a later video.